In this video, I'm going to talk about gear racks. Now, gear racks come in different shapes and sizes. As you can see, we have curved ones, we have straight ones, we have long ones, we have short ones. Now, the purpose of gear racks are very simple. It's to convert rotational motion from a motor into linear motion using the gear rack. Let's look at a single gear rack. How can we use this gear rack? Well, first we need a surface for it to slide on. This surface should be constrained on both sides so that the gear rack cannot fall off. The gear rack can go in between these slots and it can move forward and backward without moving side to side. Ideally, you would want it constrained on all sides so that way the gear rack cannot move side to side on the ends like that. But for demonstration purposes, this will do. After we have our gear rack installed, we need the gear to move the gear rack along. A gear such as this one works for this gear rack. I'll put it and it should align up with the holes with the L bracket. Next up, I need the axle to drive the gear rack. So the axle goes through the gear and that axle drives the gear rack. Lastly, I need to hook it up to a motor to automate everything. So I'll attach my medium motor to my gear and now we have an automated motion using gears and gear racks. Now let's look at a practical use for these gear racks. Let's say we have these Lego pieces on the field and we need to put them on the board in specific places. One option is to take these pieces and have our robot move each piece to the specific location one by one. But this takes a lot of time and in a competition when you're in a time crunch this isn't very effective. So what we can do is we can stack our pieces and we can have a robot dispense one at a time. This way we can have the robot take only one trip and dispense all the pieces on the board. So how would we do this? First we need a way to store these pieces. Here a container can fit exactly one of these pieces and you can stack them as high as we want. Next we need a method for dispensing the pieces onto the board. A gear rack such as this one will do. This gear rack is exactly the width of one of these pieces. After we have our gear rack, we need something for the gear rack to move it. A container like this one will do the trick. This container can fit the gear rack and the gear rack can move back and forth easily in this container. It is also constrained on both sides as to not let the gear rack uh, veer off course. After we have our gear rack, we need a method for the gear rack to move. We need a gear. An assembly such as this one has a gear which can be attached to a motor in order to move the gear rack. I will place the assembly on the end of the gear rack. Now we have an assembly that can move the gear rack back and forth. Lastly, what we need to do is attach our enclosing to this piece. And now we have completed our assembly. Something to keep in mind is that our gear rack needs to be able to fully clear the bottom of the assembly. It shouldn't be partially in at the end of its journey because then the pieces won't be able to fall completely. So our gear rack must be able to completely clear the bottom and then when it pushes in, it will completely push the piece out. If I put in a piece for testing, we move the gear rack out, the piece falls in, and then the gear rack will push the piece up. Finally, we can attach the motor. When we attach the motor, we now mechanize the entire system. So I can put in our pieces, and then Using our motor, we can dispense them one by one. One piece falls and is dispensed. Another piece falls 
and is dispensed. And we can do this however many times we want. And as we can see, this is a lot more efficient than having a robot go one by one and dispensing the pieces on the board. This is an example of one of the uses of a gear rack. Let's talk about another use for a gear rack. Instead of the gear rack moving horizontally, let us turn the assembly 90 degrees and now our gear rack moves vertically. We've just created an elevator. Now, an elevator can be useful for multiple purposes. It can reach different heights to do different tasks. But one thing I want to mention is lifting. If we added a hook to the end of this gear rack, we've eff effectively made a hook that can lift the robot on a pull-up bar. If we attach a gear and put in a motor, it will be able to lift the robot. However, it is very likely your medium motor will not be able to lift the entire robot. It will not have the power to do so. And that is fine. There is a workaround. You can gear down your motor by having it go from a smaller gear to a bigger gear and then attaching that larger gear to your assembly. So I will attach that larger gear to our assembly and now our entire assembly will move slower but it's stronger. And if this still isn't strong enough, you can add another small gear and another big gear to even further reduce the gearing and make your motor even stronger. So in this example, our gear moves slower, but it will be able to handle a much larger load. So that is it for the gear racks. Gear racks are a very useful tool, once again, to convert rotational motion from a motor to linear motion that you can use for all sorts of things. Gear racks are very effective for dispensing pieces like we showed or making elevators. And you can probably think of many other uses for gear racks as well. I hope this video helped and thank you for watching.